Imagine never paying an electricity bill again, powering your home with a mysterious machine that taps the energy all around us. That's the promise of a long-rumored device from the 1950s. In the world of free energy legends, one name keeps popping up. Otis T. Carr. He was an American inventor who claimed to have built a miraculous gravity electric generator that could output unlimited power. Nikola Tesla was a great inventor and uh, a great, great humanitarian. Well, Tesla wanted to get into his field, which was free, if you will, energy that comes from the surroundings. He was hired by um, J.P. Morgan to work with S uh, Westinghouse and Edison companies. And, and If you gave a device, like a free energy device, a generator that would, would uh, service all their needs in their home for free, Officially, Carr is dismissed as a wild dreamer or even a fraud, but some believers say his story was buried for a reason. What if the truth was darker and more dramatic? A free power machine silenced by the world's oil barons. Who was Otis T. Carr? Picture a tall engineer from Baltimore claiming to be a protege of the great Nikola Tesla. Carr arrived on the scene in the 1950s, riding the flying saucer craze. He convinced some investors he had mastered Tesla's free energy secrets. In passionate radio interviews and flyers, he spoke of tapping cosmic forces. He gave exotic names to his creations, the UTRON electric battery, the Corrado gravity motor, the photon gun. To reporters, Carr described his inventions in almost mystical terms. He once held up a strange coil and said it was truly the geometric form of space, completely round and completely square at the same time. This bizarre poetry made Carr sound like a sci-fi character from the future. Carr's headline invention was often called the gravity electric generator, or simply a free energy device. He claimed it could harness the energy of gravity and the vacuum of space itself. In his promotional brochures, he boasted, almost proudly, that his team had tapped a universal supply of energy in the form of gravity and built a machine with power continuously and absolutely free. He wasn't shy about the hype. His promises went far beyond any car motor or light bulb. He talked about powering spaceships and automobiles for free. If true, this contraption could have made oil and gasoline useless overnight. Carr even mentioned in interviews that he had offers to sell actual flying saucer ships to governments, but they turned him down for more expensive rockets. It's easy to see why oil and military interests, if involved, would consider this a catastrophic threat. Carr never showed a complete working model to the public but he and his followers sketched out a wild design. The basic idea was a series of rotating components that create a strange effect. An inner platform with batteries and neutron coils and an outer ring of electromagnets. Spin these parts in opposite directions, they claimed, and amazing things happen. In broad strokes, Carr's theory suggested that when two charged rotors spin in precise counter-rotation, they cancel out gravity and tap free space energy. In his words, the craft would lose polarity entirely and become activated by energy fields in space. To break it down, the inner rotor carried special neutron batteries and rotating plates. The outer rotor held electromagnets and capacitor plates. Both rotors spun against each other at a high speed. This counter-rotation supposedly created a self-contained gravitational field and continuous power. Think of it like two giant flywheels spinning opposite on the same axis. When done exactly right, the whole assembly becomes weightless and generates electric current without any fuel. Carr even described the metal parts turning so weirdly at speed that they became as soft as gelatin. It sounds like science fiction, but that's the gist of his design. Carr made jaw-dropping claims about output. He implied the generator could produce vast amounts of electricity, essentially unlimited as long as it ran. 
In promotional materials, he hinted that a single unit could effortlessly power dozens of homes, factories, or even an entire space station. Some stories say one six-foot prototype was meant to lift up like a UFO and generate thousands of horsepower of energy on the spot. Other tales have him predicting a full-scale saucer, about 45 feet wide, with power equivalent to hundreds of cars worth of engines. The exact numbers were never detailed, but the implication was clear. This machine would make monthly power bills vanish. Carr even joked that the device would pay for itself quickly because of all the energy it saved. But those jokes fueled rumors that he was deadly serious. Think what Carr was selling. A future where electricity was free. In his vision, every home and city could run on this endless power. According to his propaganda, the benefits would be revolutionary. Free electricity for every home, eliminating power bills. Cars and airplanes running without gasoline or batteries. Cheap personal flying saucers for the masses. Yes, he promised those too. Factories operating 24-7 with no fuel cost. It was an optimistic techno-utopia. He claimed his technology would pull energy from the power of the sun and other forces found in free abundance in the atmosphere. In his promotional flyer from 1957, he confidently wrote that he had developed both an electrical accumulator and a gravity motor using these natural powers. In plain terms, Carr said, even after the golden age of fossil fuels began, we'd still have access to clean, cheap energy. Oil company execs would have nightmares about this pitch. Their empire would crumble if it were true. Carr loved to invoke Nikola Tesla. He called Tesla his mentor, though skeptics say that's pure myth. Still, Carr said he met Tesla in passing and got locked onto the idea of anti-gravity machines. His early brochure explicitly referenced Einstein and Tesla on its cover, lending scientific gravitas to his claims. He and his promoter Norman Colton toured UFO clubs, wearing lab coats and showing off circuit diagrams. Carr frequently appeared on Long John Nabel's late night radio show, a popular UFO program in the late 1950s. On air, he would excitedly describe his rotating saucer schematics, speaking of tapping Tesla's free energy. This connection to Tesla made his story appealing to the young crowd fascinated by hidden inventions. If you believed Carr, he was carrying on Tesla's crusade for free power, and the establishment didn't want any more savants like Tesla running amok. In the summer of 1958, Carr took a bold step to prove himself. He partnered with Frontier City, a new amusement park near Oklahoma City. The deal was cinematic. Carr would build a full-scale, 45-foot flying saucer to be just a park ride. And in return, he claimed he'd also build a working six-foot prototype. The park got its saucer-shaped attraction, and Carr promised to demonstrate the smaller craft at the fairgrounds. He claimed this little saucer could lift off quietly by its own power. The world was invited to watch. Carr said that on April 19, 1959, he would make the six-foot disc rise 500 feet into the sky. The press caught wind of this, and hundreds of reporters and spectators marked their calendars. It seemed like the day may have come for the greatest energy revelation since Einstein, or at least a great show. What happened on that April day is central to the conspiracy. Thousands gathered at the fairgrounds expecting to witness a historic event. At sunrise, cameras rolled for what was teased as a free energy revolution. But to everyone's shock, nothing flew. Carr himself did not appear. There was no roaring 500-foot ascent. In fact, nothing even took off. The crowd was confused and disappointed. Later, UFO enthusiasts would whisper about what really occurred. According to one popular account, Carr was found not on the fairground but lying in a nearby hospital bed at the same time he was supposed to be piloting the saucer. 
A radio talk show host claimed he located Carr in a hospital minutes before the test, sick as a snake. To believers, this was no coincidence. It was proof of sabotage. If you were among the crowd, all you saw was a still model on a table, quietly spinning its motors. But conspiracy followers argue the whole thing was staged, either to buy time or to scare Carr off. The bottom line, the big demonstration never happened in public. In conspiracy lore, the question then arises, why did Carr vanish when he was about to change the world? Enter the villains of the story, the big oil companies. Picture the giants of the 1950s, Rockefeller-linked corporations, big petroleum trusts, reading news of a man about to unleash free fuel on the planet. They would have lost fortunes overnight. One radical theory says these energy moguls conspired behind the scenes to nudge Carr out of the spotlight. Maybe a hostile investor moved in. Maybe government officials with ties to oil gave ominous warnings. In the pages of an alternative history book, Carr's own 1957 brochure hinted at it. Little could they imagine the hell wrought by the oil companies 50 years later. It even complained that newspapers were too scared to print the news for fear of gangster censorship. To supporters of this view, the failure of the demo wasn't an accident, but a controlled shutdown. The cover story is that oil lobbyists put pressure on banks and local officials so Carr wouldn't get the funding or publicity he needed. In other words, a whisper network in the shadows made sure the event fizzled out. Shortly after the botched demonstration, another dramatic claim takes hold. Federal agents moved in on Carr's operation. According to one sensational narrative, a successful 10-mile test flight of a 45-foot saucer took place in secrecy. Immediately after that, FBI agents raided Carr's Texas workshop. They supposedly confiscated all his schematics, motors, and whatever was left of the craft. Witnesses, mostly associates like Ralph Ring, tell a lurid tale. The agents reportedly told Carr, this project would destroy the monetary system if it saw the light of day. This is the kind of statement that makes conspiracy believers' jaws drop. Whether or not this raid happened exactly as claimed, 